Hey everyone, this is the producer for Devs React to Speedruns, Mark Medina. So the episode this week is a bit different than the standard Devs React you'd usually get. We have a spinoff show called Speedrun to Day One, where we catch up on a game's lore before the next game in the entry releases. In this case, speedrunner Distro is playing through Halo 5 in anticipation for Halo Infinite. But we decided it would be a really good opportunity to use this as a proper Devs React because we do have Bree, which is a developer who worked on Halo 5 and Infinite on the stream alongside myself and the speedrunner. So this is still a Devs React, it's just one dev, myself, and the speedrunner playing the game live. But there's still all sorts of neat insights, tricks, and all that fun stuff you usually expect from a Devs React episode. So enjoy the video and get hyped for Halo Infinite. What is up, everybody? Welcome to a very special speedrun of Halo 5 Guardians, brought to you by Applebee's new Cheetos Boneless Wings. Get 10 saucy boneless wings for $9.99 in both original and flaming hot flavors. And they even sent the shirtkin. It's a shirt napkin thing it's that's awesome <laughs> i'm mark medina master of speedrun ceremonies over at ign.com where you can watch a new episode of devs react to speedrun every saturday at 8 30 a.m pacific halo infinite is the next highly anticipated chapter in the wildly popular halo franchise that pioneered first person shooters when the original game launched back in 2001. 20 years later master chief is still finishing the fight but before we dive into halo infinite I'm sure more than one of us is thinking, what the heck happened in Halo 5 Guardians? Here to help us rush through the game is Halo 5 speedrunner Distro. Hey, speed hey, Distro. Hello. Okay. So he's going to be running the game really fast. But the thing is, is like we need, we need an actual professional. We need somebody who actually knows what's going on. I am not the person for that. So we don't have a lot of time for cutscenes and stories. So here to actually break down the events of the game is 343 Industries Senior Gameplay Engineering Lead, Bree. Hey, Bree. Hello. All right. So we have our crew. We are going to play some Halo 5. Distro, you want to give us a rundown on what you're going to be playing today? All right, so we're going to speedrun through Halo 5 Guardians today, but there is a catch. It's on Legendary. <laughs> it's the hardest difficulty of the game, and um, I'm playing the unpatched version of the game, mm. this the released version. All right, well, go ahead and I count us down, count and I, I, I have a million questions about this. <laughs> okay, so three, two, one go okay question one why legendary why would you do this to yourself <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question it adds an extra layer of excitement onto the game and you just saw me uh, stuck the, uh, the sword into the elite and the game puts it behind you and it's depleted for some reason you can pick it up and that's the only depleted sword you can pick up in the game um, but the reason why we do that is because the sword gives you a 20 percent uh, movement boost and that allows you to run past enemies and just allows you to go fast, which is good for the speed run. Sounds like cheating. <laughs> I, I think we did that intentionally. I think we threw that there for speedrunners. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So we we did. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna ask, like Bree, like when you guys were making this game, like how much did you, how much did you guys think? Okay, you know, Halo is a very popular game to speed run. Like, let's design certain things with speedrunners in mind. Uh, it came up more than people might think. Um, <laughs> you know, Halo's kind of a game designed for a lot of different audiences and a lot of different play styles. Like that glitch right there where he jumps on the thing and goes out of bounds. We One of our testers actually found that and we were like, that's so cool. Like, you know, it's, it's so out of the way, like an mm -hmm. average player isn't going to run into that. But we were like, speedrunners are going to find something cool to do with that. Or just people like kind of having fun exploring out of bounds, like crazy stuff that they can see. Like we, we like to keep those things in when we can, because it's fun. I love this stuff. Yeah, a common uh, thing I hear developers say when, when we do our other show, Devs React to Speedruns, is that if a glitch is something that the average player isn't going to find, but people are utilizing for a speedrun, that they, they opt more to just keep it in because it's like, let speedrunners have their fun. <laughs> totally, totally. And it, as long as it's like not like making the game crash or like mm -hmm. causing stability issues, like we, we want to keep, you know, like, I mean, how cool is that? 
<laughs> Especially it's... with all the like crazy movement stuff you can do in five with all the ground pounds and things. All the all the out of bounds exploits in this speed run are delightful. What uh what's the reason of running so you said you're running the unpatched version. So you're running on just like an OG Xbox unpatched, like no updates, I assume. Correct, that's mostly because of um, some campaign balancing stuff that happened. Enemies are, um, especially Storm Rifle Jackets are way weaker on this one, on this version. And Grunts with the Plasma is also way weaker. So what you just saw me do here um, is another bounce glitch. Wait, I actually have to revert because I didn't get the spawn kills. Uh... One second. Don't worry. This is one of those things where you're like, I have to do all this. I would just believe you. I... Yeah. It's 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 RNG manipulation. <laughs> exactly. It's actually difficult to clear. Okay, that wasn't as planned, but it's fine. <laughs> but yes, it's legendary. So dying a few times is completely normal. I, absolutely. If yeah. you yeah, if you got through this without dying, I would be like, okay, God gamer. Yeah, le legendary does not does not screw around. So I I assume like, I mean I can see it happening right now. Like, it's not just about glitches and stuff. Like you actually do have to land these shots and like at least be pretty decent at the game. <laughs> uh, yes, being able to hit headshots is very important, especially for the smaller enemies like the crawlers that you see, which are these uh, dog-like enemies, and also for grunts. So um, it's also important to be able to hit some precise shots, which I'm going to attempt very soon. The enemy you just saw jump here is called the Knight. When I shoot his side core, he's going through a raging animation. Okay, first he has to look at me. <laughs> and he exposes his face, and if I shoot that, it's a one-hit kill. Boom! That, and oh there man. we go. That was nice. good. I like that. So, Halo 5 is the, is the uh, some would say, is the fifth entry. Some people would say it's the sixth entry, if you count Halo Reach. We're going to count Halo Reach, because that's my favorite Halo of all time. Oh, and, and <laughs> ODST. Oh, okay. So, this is Halo 20. Um, yep. <laughs> More um, or less. Could you give us a quick like story recap? What why why are we why are we here? What what is exactly happening? <laughs> yeah, as we've already like finished the first level because distance mm -hmm. is so dang fast. So yep. yeah, so Halo Five is picking up after uh, Halo Four, um, mm -hmm. last sort of mainline entry in the series, um, and specifically that last level introduced uh, new characters uh, in Spartan Locke, uh, Spartan Buck, uh, Tanaka, and Vale a new fire team Osiris that were tasked mm -hmm. with uh, hunting down uh, Jul Amdama, kind of the new uh, leader of the Covenant, uh, long-standing enemies of the human race, and uh, tracking down Dr. Halsey, who is sort of the mother of the Spartan program. She mm -hmm. kind of helped build, you know, the armor and all the cool things the Spartans can do. Um, uh, in the cutscenes we didn't see, uh, we found her, uh, we defeated Madama, and now we've cut to a different perspective in the Master Chief, uh, who's the protagonist of Halo Infinite as well. Um, and this is the first mission uh, in the main games where you're actually playing alongside some of his uh, childhood uh, friends and brothers and sisters in arms, uh, the rest of Blue Team, as they're called, mm -hmm. uh, Spartans Fred, Kelly, and Linda. And they are currently on a mission through the Argent Moon, an old abandoned uh, research station. And this is kind of like a little slice of life mission. Uh, the call to action kind of happens later on in this mission. This is just kind of what Spartans do every day. Where does it fit into the story that if you push up against walls, you can just like clip through them? <laughs> like, is that is that canon or? Is that... <laughs> you know, it might be. Um, no, I. <laughs> Master Chief's I, been through a lot. Like you would he's, assume, he's just like he's I got an impressive this. individual. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I love like the rest of Blue Team. It's just like, what is this man well, up to? Well, Chief, this? where are you going, buddy? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Chief just uh, he just jumped off the thing and like ground pounded like four stories below us. So I, <laughs> yep. yeah, I don't know what's going right on. into the loading zone. <laughs> Distro just knew where that was. Didn't need the hunter to come out and have a really cool moment where he breaks the bridge. 
Oh yeah, that's always the fun thing about speedruns. Is as uh, yep. as cool as they look, they also miss a lot of cool moments. And but then they also have a lot of cool moments too. Right, so. right. Cool moments. Yeah, nobody's seen because they they are crazy. My favorite just thing here. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm. Uh, what you saw there is a power slide that has actually been patched out. It's one of the advantages of playing the unpatched version of the game. And just a fun thing you can do. It doesn't save as much time as you would think, but um, it looks really cool. It so does Bree, a bunch really of cool. those. Bree, why did you patch it out? <laughs> it wasn't me. But a lot of the things we did patch out uh, were for a lot of like competitive balance and integrity. So like a lot of like physics exploits and things like that could be taken advantage of in Halo's multiplayer. Mm -hmm. And because they're physics bugs, it's not really plausible to like fix them in multiplayer, but not campaign. Got it. Um, but everywhere we could, we tried to like keep the speed running stuff uh, accessible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there there were a few things like that where I understand why Distro wants to play on on day one version. Yeah, Distro, when you play, did you ever play this online? You just wreck everybody because you're like, I'm speedrunner, I'm the best, or is it just a completely different experience? <laughs> I have played online, but I'm not as good as one would think, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> he's like over there they're like okay, playing like oddball and he's just over here trying to glitch into a wall <laughs> like what does this guy do he's just free kills <laughs> i just speed ran slayer <laughs> this trick is incredibly difficult by the way so if i can get this first try it would be great what did you just do um i failed it but can go into the pocket into a pocket here if you time you jump precisely and then you have to wait for a certain amount which is also very precise and then you can go to the right into another pocket and you go a bit back so you don't get walked back inside and then you can go out of bounds like this and this skips a lot of the game there is a room oh. with hunters since the reactor room clear out of a ton of enemies and then there's a space with uh, banshees where you have to push a button and uh, yeah, yeah. some vents and we skip all of that actually Fair yeah, enough. This, this doesn't look intentional at all. I, don't, I played we, this game. I don't remember it looking like this. <laughs> we we certainly, with Halo 5, wanted to support a kind of a variety of, you know, clearing objectives in, you know, unique and interesting ways. And this is certainly creative. Yeah, I'll uh, give you that. It is definitely up there on the uniqueness scale. Uh, how prone is the game to crashing if you do weird stuff? Or is it, like, pretty solid? It's pretty solid. There is one uh, strat that can crash the game, but that's a strat that you only do when you go for War Record. It's a, it's a dialogue skip on the third level, but besides that, it actually almost never crashes. And we're not going for World Record. No, I'm trying. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> Don't think we're going to make it. <laughs> not with, not with yeah. me in your ear asking you a million questions. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually very difficult. Um, I talked about Storm Rifle Jackets on Unpatched. Uh, they're actually way stronger on Unpatched. They nerfed them in the updated version of the game. Um, but still, there's a lot of advantages besides that that make it worth to run the release version. There's a few Rod Grunts who can one-hit kill me, so I have to be careful. Yeah, this is a cool arena. I really like this encounter. Man, I have not played this game in a long time, but I, I kind of miss it. I... I do like this game. I know I know there's some stuff with the story that people don't super love, but I remember liking it enough. enough. Yeah, and there's a <laughs> there's a lot of fair criticism, but like there's a lot of stuff in this campaign that I'm really fond of. Like I think we've got some really cool like combat encounters, especially mm -hmm. with like when you've got four players in co-op, like we there's a lot of cool stuff in this game. Bree, did you work like, on four as well or just five? I joined the team shortly after they shipped for, so I was okay. here for all of Five's campaign and all of Halo Infinite. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was going to be something I was going to ask, Dishiro. Um, we've done one of these before. We did it for Resident Evil 7, and uh, our speedrunner, Marforia, was just like, I, you know, and then once Village comes out, I will be switching to Village, and that will be, like, my new speedrun game. Do you envision that happening for uh, you? Like, are you going to switch over to Infinite and start speedrunning that? Uh, it depends on whether I like the game, but sure, odds yeah. are that I'm going <laughs> to check it out at least. See if, see if it's viable for speedrun. See if it's a fun speedrun. Exactly. Because you, you speedrun other games, right? Not just not just Halo 5. Yeah, I also have done uh, Tom Clancy's Pinterest speedruns. 
the first three games. Is Halo 5 the only uh, Halo you speed ran? Love Halo 2 on Legendary, which is also a great speed run. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, that was a clear. That was actually very difficult. I'm glad I got try. <laughs> I didn't notice. Did they have the extra hunter because you skipped them earlier on in here? Um, there's actually something curious about that. It took a while for the speedrunners to figure it out, but apparently if all your teammates die, you get the extra hunters, but they didn't die in this case, so I only had the two hunters instead of four. Oh, well, that's a bug, but I'm glad it got it. I glad you got. I'm glad you got the faster version. <laughs> yeah, we we there was a way we discovered that you could legitimately skip the hunters. Uh, that uh, Distro like just out of bounds skip them halfway through the level. Sure. And the designer for that mission was like, "Oh, that's kind of cool." What if they show up at the end as like an extra harder boss and there's an achievement for it? Uh, so that's where that achievement came from. Hmm. All right. Yeah, if you skip, you have to fight four hunters at once, and especially on Legendary, that's very scary. Yeah, sure. So another thing I should talk about in the unpatched version of the game, um, one of the big advantages, actually one of the two biggest ones, I believe, is that when you hit the hunter with a sword, they start flinching. So you can hit them in the back three times like that, and they die. In the patch version of the game, they don't flinch. They just instantly uh, destroy you. Oh, yes. cool. They're like, hey, we need to patch it and make these, uh, you know, just kill you instantly. <laughs> Let's, uh, Bree, why would you do that? <laughs> you know... <laughs> I just love this scenario where Bree's in the background, just the mastermind, just pulling levers. She's like, oh, the hunters are too easy. Nope. <laughs> now they're impossible. I actually had to kill yeah. that guy to skip some dialogue. I'm not to say this. It actually saves time. <laughs> Wait, so who do you good. have to kill? You have to kill someone innocent? Yeah, he was like in front of the elevator door that opened. I just naded him. I kind of feel bad. I, I, I can't believe you do that in front of me. I... I feel awful now. I feel bad every time. I believe it. You're Master Chief. <laughs> you're you're supposed to be good guy. Well, now you're back to uh, was actually like an ex Oni agent. Uh, so he's he's a little more shades of gray maybe than than Chief is. Oh so, you know, okay okay. Well if you're so, if you're Locke right now then you that's fine. D Distro is just in character. That's all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the end of that last mission. Um, so Chief uh, had a vision from Cortana, who was presumed dead at the end of Halo 4, mm -hmm. uh, who's calling him to, uh, you know, this this otherworldly place. There's this thing called the Reclamation going on. It's, it's, it's all weird and spooky. And so he goes AWOL at the end of that mission, going to search for Cortana. And now Fireteam Osiris is kind of uh, on the heels of... Uh, Master Chief, and we're hearing all these reports of these weird, like, robot things coming out of the ground on planets, and that's that's a good, that's a cool skip. Uh, where you just, like, hop yeah, on the I, I was like, and... that that looked a little <laughs> strange. Yeah, you, you just, like, kind of <laughs> snuck through the vent there. That's where the splinter cell skills co come from. You just kind of, like, sneak through vents and stuff. <laughs> that's, I never realized that the two speed runs were connected, but, hey, we, we learned something today. This is where things get really weird. Um, what I just did is called the GUI deload. I went through two load triggers uh, very quickly, which deload the ending area of the game. I'm going to attempt a skip that is actually very difficult, so I might miss it, which would lose me 40 seconds, but that's fine. We'll get it eventually. <laughs> uh, but I go out of bounds, and the way this skip works is actually really cool. So this is why I call it the GUI deload. That area is unloaded and it looks all GUI. But what I'm doing here, <laughs> sure. I'm hitting enemy triggers from out of bounds. And this is the really hard part. I have to hit the trigger in mid-air. Got it. And then I have to go back inbounds with a very specific angle. Because loading in the area. And now I have to wait for two minutes. And while I'm waiting, there's literally enemy spawning to the void and dying. So oh I'm skipping gosh. the whole ending fight like that. <laughs> I love this idea that you said things are about to get weird. Because... <laughs> Because it's so been good. completely normal up until now. <laughs> now it's weird. <laughs> so you have to wait for two minutes because what? The enemies are just sitting there killing themselves? or just Yeah, falling. the ending of the level is just a huge fight. And there's a wave spawning after wave. And around after two minutes, they have all spawned in and just fallen, fallen into the void and died. Yeah, so basically he's... He triggered the scripting for all those enemies to spawn, but didn't trigger loading that part of the level. So they're all spawning and then just falling into the void into their deaths. 
which is I don't know, man. That sounds, that sounds pretty that's messed so, up. That's not so even, cool. Not even giving them a chance. <laughs> 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 sounds a little sounds a little jacked up, if you ask me. But all right, <laughs> I'm on the side think... of the enemies on this one. Destro's he's doing some unfair things. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like I said, we we found a lot of like glitches we knew with the speedrunners would use. I don't think we found that one. That's really cool. That's uh, Bree's like okay, you know, I'm just uh, you know, <laughs> guys. I'm, I'm just glad the game doesn't crash. That you know that that was my contribution to the speedrun. <laughs> this is actually where the game could crash if you kill the soldiers in front of the gate that I skipped before, um, which is also necessary to get uh, this GUI deload in the first place. But if you do that, you can do a dialogue skip, and for some reason, the game can crash sometimes if you do that. Oh, it weird. saves a bit of time, because like this, I have to go to the ending fight, and I have to listen to uh, the dialogue until it finishes, instead of skipping it. Uh, Bree, as a developer, like how does it feel when people do stuff like this to your game? <laughs> I love it. Oh, good. I love it so much. <laughs> like, because to me, this is like, I had started watching speedruns, like, back when they like the early days of like super metroid speed running and i was sure. like oh my god this is so cool and like it was legitimately like when i got into the industry i was like i hope i work on something that like people mm -hmm. enjoy enough to want to speed run sure um because it you know i think for me it's like an expression of you know enjoyment and fun and i i just i just it's cool i we make games for people to have fun right and so that... However, people want to have fun as long as it's not hurting other people, and, you know, other than those like, you know, <laughs> Prometheans falling into the, space. Yeah, other than, yeah, the poor NPCs. That's always kind of like the thing is, is, uh, we will get comments on Devs React and, and people will be like, what? That, like, why are you playing the developers' games like this? And it's like, you have to understand that that speedrunner has probably played that game way more than you probably ever would, which, which, which begs the question, like, Distro, do you do you have any idea how many hours you've put into this game? I actually don't know, but a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You might have played it more than I have, which would be impressive. <laughs> Probably more than me, which is, I played I played like twenty hours. So if you've played it more than that, you have. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're now on uh, kind of one of the non-combat missions. Uh, mm -hmm. We added a few of these into Halo 5, and they're actually some of my favorite missions because they have just, like, they're packed with, like, cool dog and some Easter eggs. Like, this mission has a, like, a vending machine that if you interact with it, I think it's that one, um, but you can get, like, a soccer ball that shows up and, like, kick it around and there's goals and... Um, they're they're just a cool kind of like expansion of like trying to do different kinds of storytelling. There it is. We got it in the speed run. I'm so happy. I love this thing. Do you always play with a soccer ball, or are we just we just? <laughs> I'm just showing it off. Um, also, the launch I did before. But uh, an interesting thing about this soccer ball is that in the release version of the game it looks like this, but in in a later patch it became silver coated for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why that is. <laughs> That's a great question. Machine buttons seem to be in order. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. I'm like, hey, this is... we patched a bunch of stuff in this soccer ball. We just we can't have it like this anymore. <laughs> the, we, the soccer ball needed... was 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 it needed to be more futuristic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> is that so what's what's the speed run right now? Is just dialogue? Just waiting for people to get done talking. Yeah, there are three levels like this. I have to wait for people to um, to finish talking, and then I have to talk to two people in this one, and that's pretty much it. And uh, during that, I can just mess around and score a goal. <laughs> get the credit birthday party sound. Yeah, a lot of these missions, like this mission in particular, where where Locke and and his team are trying to track down. We know Chief is somewhere on this planet. He's investigating these big robot things. Uh, where's he at? What's he doing? Um, we're kind of out on the border of UNSC territory, and people aren't super trusting of the Spartans, and so they're 
trying to just figure out what's going on here. And I think Distro's just heard all the information he needs to hear. So he's going on to the next mission. We have we have all the exposition we need. Time to kill more aliens. Basically. That's <laughs> It could all be boiled down to we we gotta go we gotta get back on the battlefield we gotta kill some more things guys let's go like all right sounds good so who who are we are we are back to being master chief yeah we we are still uh, Spartan Lock and his team oh, we're still Lock okay yep and we think Chief is somewhere in the area um, the mission's called unconfirmed reports kind of alluding to there are unconfirmed reports of Master Chief um, right right. And we've been working with uh, kind of the AI governor of this facility, uh, who is the uh, that big blue AI. I think we briefly saw. Wait. Oh my God. That's what? Awesome. Yeah, I just <laughs> that's I just hit the no trigger, <laughs> so I can go pick up the rocket launcher and set up uh, some spawn killing, which is very common in legendary. Because I can't spawn that's the enemies so cool. when I go into the stairs here. And, uh, oh my gosh! Night. Look at that. That's great. I, I was like, was that. he throwing this grenade at and some enemies just... That's <laughs> uh, pretty rude, but okay. <laughs> They're like, hey, look, we're spawned. We're on the battlefield. And Deistro's like, I'm trying to confirm reports, guys. I'm out of here. Like, I, I'm done. Well, and normally we'll spawn them before you get here, but Deistro just, like, came in so fast that the game's like, <laughs> oh, well, um, you're, you haven't spawned them yet, so here you go. Here, here's some enemies. Uh, we see every rocket launcher, so you know, sucks for them. But <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> Look at that! That's so good. <laughs> I was like, "What is he looking at?" Punches the air, and then a the enemy just spawns right in front of him. Just got the timing. Imagine, that imagine good. being that enemy right now and just being like, "I have joined the battle." <laughs> <laughs> this is my moment, Mom. I'm really gonna do it this time. <laughs> <laughs> I crave Spartan blood. Fuck! <laughs> Why? <laughs> Distro, did you just give uh, Nornfang to one of the your companions? Yes. It doesn't actually bring anything in the speedrun in this level, but uh, it's still a stronger weapon, so it doesn't hurt. Yeah, they might get a lucky heal with it. Yeah, we, we hid a lot of the legendary weapon variants kind of all throughout the campaign. Uh, Nornfang is Linda, one of the Spartans on blue team. That's her sniper rifle. So that was the uh, that was the prowler that Master Chief and friends escaped uh, the previous level on. And so this is kind of the confirmation. Okay, we know they're here. Found her her sniper rifle. Let's uh, keep going down deeper into the depths and see what we can find. All right. There's actually a very difficult tri uh, skip coming up. There's a bunch of Bane rifle soldiers here. They can one hit kill me. There's really a lot of them, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to boost off the geometry here. And got the bounce again. It's a common theme in the run, as you can see. Nice. This looks insane. This is... This... this no. <laughs> like, that's the, I don't think this is how a game's supposed to look. <laughs> so, and, you know, we, we actually added a lot of, like, loading contingencies uh, in many cases uh, to be able to accommodate things like this. I don't know if we knew that you could go out of bounds there, but uh, the game's pretty resilient uh, to, to doing this stuff, which I'm very glad for. It, like, makes you hit, like, checkpoints and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, Bree, uh, how does Halo Infinite end? Um, well, we reveal <laughs> that Master Chief's favorite cheese is Swiss. Oh, yeah, it's, that's, it's been that's, an age-old question. That's the, well, yeah, specifically aged Swiss. It's so Swiss, that's, okay. Yeah. That was a um, double meaning on that on that one right there. That's, yeah. that's clever. That's mm -hmm. clever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's... that's Spoiler legendary ending, so get ready for that. That's that oh that's the okay. legendary ending. Got it. <laughs> if it's if you do it on normal, you just get regular Swiss cheese. Something new. Defend yourself. You are necessary to Uh Bree, um my producer's asking, what is the reclaimer saga? <laughs> I don't know what, yeah, that, so, don't uh, know what that means. When, <laughs> when 343, uh, you know, 
on the mantle of making uh, Halo from Bungie. Uh, we started with Halo 4 uh, and mm -hmm. sort of diving into more of the lore and um, kind of expand the universe and what are the Prometheans and what are the Forerunners and um, and then in Halo 5, kind of expanding things even more. Like we've gone to a couple planets now. Um, and like this planet in particular, uh, Meridian, was uh, what we call glassed by the Covenant. It's mm -hmm. kind of why everything looks all ashy and, and weird. Um, and basically, like, a lot of doing with the so called Reclaimer saga is kind of telling the story of, you know, what happens after Halo 3 and the fall of the Covenant. So, like, one of the themes that's happening in this mission um, this part is like, dealing with like the civil war that's unfolding like as a result of sort of the power vacuum in the covenant that was defeating Jewel Mandama in the first mission and we'll and then uh you know going into Halo Infinite it's kind of uh you know there's a lot going on in Halo 4 and 5 um and I think Halo Infinite's more of like a spiritual reboot you know we're trying to get mm -hmm. back to the basics get back to a Halo ring um and you know not like abandon you know the threads the story threads and things we introduced with halo 5 but you know hopefully you don't need to like you know know literally everything about halo because uh, that was mm. one of the criticisms about 5 was there's a lot going on in this game uh, that we're just breezing right past um so i think you know halo infinite's uh, in many ways a, a return to you know the series roots and uh, i think i think people have a good time with it yeah, I should probably I, I mention. Should, should be soon. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Should, no, go, go for it. I should probably mention that I um, left the cut, left the game at the ending of Unconfirmed because the cutscene takes four minutes before you can skip it. Sorry about that. And um, <laughs> uh, just load up the next level. And I should also mention there should be enemies here where I'm driving right now, but I sprint jump and frost at the beginning, and that skips the load trigger, so there's no enemies here. I mean, it looks like an epic battle you got going on here. Bree, I think you guys forgot to put enemies at this part. I, I think <laughs> Distro just went too fast. Yeah, we're now going <laughs> we're going backwards through the mission we came in on and the mission before this. Uh, because in all the things uh, Distro just skipped, uh, we were introduced to a new antagonist, the word Maternal, uh, who's claiming that uh, he is protecting Cortana. And Chief is going after Cortana, ended up on this big robot thing that's in the sky that's called a Guardian, hence the Halo 5 Guardians subtitle we have. Um, and now uh, that big old robot thing is coming out of the ground. It's uh, destroying everything. People are evacuating, all sorts of craziness. Um, and we need to get off the planet before we all die, um, which I don't think Distro is going to have a problem with because he's very fast. Dusha, how often does the warthog just not behave there? It like doesn't, you know, get stuck. Like it seemed um, a fine lot of there. Times. Yeah. <laughs> Funny thing is, it's actually uh, the vehicles have different physics on the patched version of the game. It's actually easier to get into the fight. We're not supposed to have the warthog here in the first place. Nope. But uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. Well, you could fold me. <laughs> <laughs> Our producer just asked the weirdest question that I completely <laughs> forgot. <laughs> well, I, I think I heard it. So, uh, oh, go for it, Bree. Yeah. So, if you can if you can paraphrase that. He was, he was asking <laughs> if uh, the guardians are the uh, entities that mysteriously kill you in multiplayer when you like fall out of bounds and stuff. When it says killed by the guardians, um, and unfortunately, the answer is I don't actually know. I, I oh. maybe. It was, Let's go with uh, let's go with maybe. Let's go with maybe. Go. I'm gonna give it a hard <laughs> maybe, producer. <laughs> let's go with uh, <laughs> sure, but don't quote me on that. Please. <laughs> Good thing this isn't being streamed on the internet or something, right? Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, three four three developer confirms. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hard maybe. Yeah, hard maybe. That's, that's the Possible. loosest confirmation I can provide. We call that fan fiction. You know, <laughs> write your own story there. 
if if the producer wants it to be the guardians that are killing you, then you know who yeah. are we to say that that's incorrect? <laughs> I'm sure you can splice my audio together in such a way that it'll say whatever you want it to say. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the middle of an epic battle right now. What what's the goal here? Are we just killing everybody? Yes. yes, I have to kill everyone here. All right. Yeah, basically. Sounds like a Halo game. We're trying to get back onto that space elevator we came down in the second to the previous the mission before last. Uh, we now have to climb back up it to get to our pelican to escape the planet, and we're trying to uh, clear a path for the civilians along the way. I love that it it is the cannon term space elevator because that that sounds awesome. I believe so. Why wouldn't it be? It's an it's, elevator it's, that's in space. Well, it's an elevator that goes to space. Oh, that's awesome. I yeah. wish that was I wish that was real. Could you Me imagine? too. Just <laughs> like, Yeah, you're just gonna go to space now. Yeah. <laughs> just it's just a button that says S. Yep. S for space. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Distro, you're uh I don't I don't wanna call you out. I don't mean this in a bad way at all. But you're you're not the world record holder for this, right? No, I used to be, but uh, okay. I stopped running for a few years, and now David Spartan95 is the world record holder. Oh, uh, okay. There's actually a fun speedrun fact here. Also, I reverted because the gate closes, and I didn't know where this ghost turret is, but it's very helpful. So I'm going to pick it up. There we go. As soon as the door closes, I get walked back inside. But the interesting fact is that oh. um, the dialogue here only starts um, if when Vale is alive. If she's dead, you cannot progress. You have to wait for her to get revived again to respawn. We don't know uh, why, but it's uh, important for the speedrun. I think I know why. <laughs> I think it's just the scripting is waiting for her to say the words. <laughs> so protect Vale. She's she's great. She's like a translator. Uh, she can speak uh, Sangheili. She's kind of like a Spartan. Not diplomat, but like she's... Uh, she's, she's just got like a cool backstory, and she's voiced by Laura Bailey, who's wonderful. I completely forgot that that's uh, the mission name here is is a Firefly reference, which is amazing since Nathan Fillion is in this game. Yeah, <laughs> I love Firefly so much. So I just I saw the title and I was like, oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> I also no, did I not would... realize that Laura Bailey was in this game. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a bunch of there's a bunch of cool voice actors in this game. We haven't Steve, met Steve Downs this being yet. one of them. He's my favorite. <laughs> so, an are enemy we hiding? Did we make it to space? Uh, we, we're like was... halfway up the elevator, give or take. Sure. Uh, okay. Distro, is this more like you just have to wait for everybody to spawn and kill them, kind of? Um, no, I have to kill everyone, but there were one soldier and the crawl that were hiding very well. Usually they come towards you, but they were mm -hmm. hiding. I mean, they've seen what you've done so far. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, can you blame them? I <laughs> can't really blame them. I, I would hide as well. Yeah, yeah, now you can actually see the elevators moving. We're, we're moving we on are. towards we're, space. We are, we are going to space in the space elevator. That's good. But yes, the rest of the level is mostly spawn killing. You will also see me melee and jump after each clear. That's a delay a, ch uh, delay a checkpoint. Oh. Otherwise, I have to wait for the whole dialogue again. If I die. Oh, if you die, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm. we have we have a bunch of, like, sort of protections in this game to, like, try to make sure we don't give you a bad checkpoint. One of them is, are you in the air? Because if you're in the air, you might be falling off a cliff, and that would be a very bad place to give you a checkpoint. That sounds like a terrible checkpoint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So that makes a lot of sense. So what uh, mission are we on, and how many missions are there total? I'm not trying to rush you. I'm just curious. <laughs> uh, there's 15, I think. Is that right? Yes. It's been a few years. There's 15, and this is evacuation, which is mission number... Ooh, I don't actually know. Wait, Osiris, Blue uh, Team Blast, Meridian Station. It should be mission number six, I believe. Six, yeah, yeah. All right. Yes, Bree, this it's, is... been, it's it's been a couple of years. What have you been up to? Oh, oh right. yeah, a whole, so whole nother game. Yeah, yeah <laughs> uh, so I've been uh, so on Halo Five. I worked mostly on the campaign, um, and very early in Halo Infinite's development, I was working on campaign as well. But uh, 
Sometime during development, I got the opportunity to lead Halo Infinite's uh, Academy and Bots features. Um, mm. So if you've played like the bots uh, or any of the Academy stuff in our now multiplayer beta uh, or the preview flights, um, that was a lot of my uh, my work and my team's work. Um, so that's been a really, really cool thing to work on. I've, he I've heard the bots are very good. I am very glad people feel that way. I'm very proud of them. <laughs> that's I. I... Uh, that would be Mjolnir. Um, so the Spartans. No, uh, nobody can hear our producer. He's asking what bot is, <laughs> is the favorite <laughs> and what makes it unique. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, thank you. Uh, so my favorite bot <laughs> is a bot named Mjolnir. So the all the Spartans wear Mjolnir armor. Sure. Um, and I really like puns, so I couldn't resist naming one of the bots Mjolnir. Um, and then uh, no one told me this. I found out on lunch day. Um, but all the bots have uh, some of the customizations that you can uh, find and unlock through playing multiplayer. So they gave Mjolnir uh, little cat ears on her helmet. Uh, which oh, that's is fantastic. Adorable. And there's already been like fan art of it. I'm just, I was over the moon on Monday for a lot of reasons, but um, <laughs> the Monday we released, I mean. Right, right, right. Yeah. Just beta. How, how was that doing the whole like surprise multiplayer like i i i assume you knew <laughs> so uh how That's was that assumption. like way yeah uh, how was that like waiting for that uh stream to to end where they were going to announce it at the end like where you just it was kind of like christmas but you're the only one that knows it's christmas tomorrow so you're like <laughs> i really want to tell people <laughs> sure um, but, you know we wanted it to be a surprise um and it was just Oh my god, it was such a catharsis after, you know, working on this for so long and, mm -hmm. you know, the last two years with the pandemic and, you know, it's been, it's been a crazy uh, development of this game and just finally getting it out into the world and getting to share it with all of you. Um, it means a lot and to see people reacting and having fun and just, you know, it's, it's why we do this, you know, it, it's, it's a real privilege to be something that brings a little joy into the world. Um, so it, I, I, I was crying. It was, it was emotional. Um, it's, and, uh, and, and are it's, you, are you still feeling kind of that same way? Because, you know, at, at, at this point, the campaign's still not out. So you, you mm -hmm. guys get to release the game twice. We <laughs> kind of do. It's like Christmas happens <laughs> twice in a row, but like three weeks apart. It's great. But everybody um, knows this Christmas is coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and the uh, completely lost my train of it. It's been it's been a just a huge delight, and you know this is just the beginning for us, right? Like there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of cool stuff still to come, and it's a cool thing to be a part of. Distro, have you hopped into the multiplayer at all for Infinite? Uh, yes, I actually played it uh, before <laughs> today. Nice, it was pretty fun. Oh, good. Are you just walking I, on the not. sky? Yes, um, I got That's... a bounce earlier than the developers intended, I assume, because this is you supposed sure to keep you from going <laughs> out of bounds, but now it's a floor. Sure. Fine. I accept it. <laughs> okay, this looks more This looks more intended. Just walking this around This level is jungle. actually a very flashy level. Um, there's a lot of crazy things I had in the run still. Yeah, this uh, is now we're back as a uh, Master Chief. You'll actually notice uh, the the HUD, the, you know, the shield display, uh, the health, and where everything is. The kind of outlines around the corners. Um, they're different for each Spartan. So if you play in co-op as well, everybody has like a different HUD and a different layout, um, which is you know every Spartan's unique. So that's cool. Mm. Uh, but we're back as Master Chief, um, and we rode one of those guardians. Uh, out of Meridian, and it led us here to this really weird planet. Uh, and uh, I'm sure Distro is gonna zoom bite right bite bite ride them right by them. That, uh, no, you had it right. Bite but, ride them. Yeah. Bite ride them. <laughs> um, and uh, well, right now he's smashing through walls, which I mean I assume is intended. I don't know if this is. Oh, di I wish I could say that was intended. That was sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Just skip like that whole encounter there. That's cool. Um, yeah, so I mean, we're we're getting clues that Cortana might be here, and what does that mean? Because she's supposed to be dead. So Master mm. Chief and his friends are 
looking for her and seeing more of these guardians show up and it's very ominous and very mysterious. All, right. <laughs> All those glitches and jumping on buildings. You gotta wait for the bridge, though. <laughs> <laughs> Can't quite make that. Not get too crazy. Let's. <laughs> there is actually an interesting skit coming up because it's the only one in the game, so I have to rely oh. on some um, well AI luck, pretty much. But first, I have to do some parkouring here and hope to not die because there's a lot of enemies that can one-hit kill me. There's four turret sol commander soldiers ahead. If they hit me once, if they get a clear shot on me, I'm usually dead. But um, this is going to be cool. It could take anything from one try to maybe 10 or more if I'm really unlucky, but we'll see. Oh boy. First, I have to survive this part. I wait for a checkpoint in this cave. Let's see. Okay, I got the checkpoint. So this is actually a massive skip. There's a huge clear, including a warden. And I want his back to be looking at me like this. And then I need the one to do a specific attack while I'm in front of this rock. And uh, that's the wrong one. I need him to oh. launch at me. So this is like a normal thing that you guys have to do. Is like if he does not do the right thing, you have to just reload until he does it. Pretty much. Yes, there we go. <laughs> so what happened there? <laughs> he just hit you like a baseball. <laughs> By standing in front of the rock. When the one does that uh, specific attack, for some reason the hitbox detection doesn't work correctly and he pushes me into the geometry and the pressure launches me up in the air. There's actually a huge death barrier that we also, um, well, we weren't above it and we skipped it. We just didn't make it quite high enough. <laughs> Which is so, great. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's the... Uh... How's the speed run going? Like, it, would this be decent, or would you have reset multiple times by now? Or... Well, if I, I went for a personal best time, I would have reset, but I think for a marathon setting, this is actually a really, mm -hmm. really great run. The beginning was a bit sloppy, but that's fine. I'm, pre I'm pretty happy. That's good. So, okay, so, okay, well, people will see it on the screen. We're at 44 minutes, so, and what, we're on mission seven, right? Uh, this should be mission eight by now, I think. Oh my gosh. I'm not okay. sure. Counting is hard. La last time I asked, we were on mission six, but I mean, I I'm completely okay with the fact that we are just blasting through the game so fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of the it's kind of the point here. It's why we've gathered all here today. <laughs> what uh, what, sorry. what pace would you say you're on? Um, actually, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> This is where things get a bit weird again. I uh, just clipped sure. to the wall. And I have to okay. hit the low trigger from mid-air here. And if I mess it up, I could soft lock, so I have to be careful. And then I hit the low trigger <laughs> of the end of the level, and I got I like, it. I like that the, the ship has just stopped rendering. <laughs> sure, yeah. It was just like a floating engine. <laughs> what the? I'm bamboozled by that one. I have no <laughs> idea what happened. Uh, this should be mission nine coming up now, I think. All right. A, a soft lock for those listening at home is when the game, like, technically doesn't freeze or whatever, but you've put yourself in a situation where you would, what, basically have to manually quit out or something. Like, you can't. You're just stuck. <laughs> yeah, what happens there... Uh, what happens there is that the area around you loads in and you're stuck inside of the geometry. That's pretty much why it soft locks. And when that happens, the runner's pretty much dead. Mm. If it were to happen to you right now, like on a, on you know, like you said, in a marathon setting, what would you what would you have to do? I may or may not have a backup safe. <laughs> oh, perfect! <laughs> you love to hear it. Are you uh, are you in the GDQ scene at all? Uh, yes, I actually uh, ran the game at Awesome Games Done Quick 2018, and I'm going to run it again mm -hmm. at Awesome Games Done Quick 2022. Nice. So, oh, awesome. That's awesome. Oh. <laughs> I will be tuning in for that. Yeah, that's great.
If you're just tuning in, welcome! This is a speedrun of Halo 5 to get you caught up on the Halo series story right in time for Halo Infinite. It's brought to you by Applebee's new Cheetos Boneless Wings, available in both original and flaming hot. $9.99 for 10 saucy wings. Doesn't get any cheesier than this. Available now for a limited time. I'm Mark Medina, and joining me today is Halo 5 speedrunner Distro, and from 343 Industries, Bree, who will break down exactly what's happening in the game. Uh, Bree, can you give us a, we're, we're going to call it a, a hashtag lore update, uh, which is uh, something that's kind of carried on from, from past episodes of this show. Uh, where are we at, and uh, what is happening in the story? Certainly. Yeah, so we are now on Sanghelios, which is the homeworld of the Elites. Um, and basically, in the previous sort of Act 1 of the game, uh, Chief found his way onto a Guardian, made his way to the planet of Genesis, where Cortana has mysteriously found her way and is up to something that's still, at this point in the story, kind of weird and mysterious. That's cool. Um, sure. And uh, so... Uh, Locke and his fire team, fire team Osiris, are searching to get back to Chief and kind of, you know, see what Cortana's doing, help him out. Um, and, uh, but they need a way to get there. And so they found that one of these guardians is still unactivated and dormant uh, over on St. Helios. But they're going to need the help of an old friend, or, you know, frenemy maybe, uh, the Arbiter, who is uh, currently sure. engaged in a civil war for control of kind of the remnants of the Covenant. Uh, he's got this group called the Swords of Sanghelios. They've got those, like, they're in the red armor or, like, the red wraith right here, uh, as opposed to the sort of purple colors that the Covenant typically use. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're here uh, on Sanghelios to meet up, to assist, uh, and to uh, get his uh, help to help us secure the Guardian so that we can get on board and track down Chief and figure out what's going on with all these Guardians, what's Cortana up to. This is also my favorite mission makes, in the game. Makes sense to me. What, why is it Why is it your favorite mission? Um, it was... I, I love St. Helios. The, the art palette is so cool. Um, and just the variety in this mission in particular is really great. Like, there's a lot of really cool, like, combat spaces, just sealing, like, all these old like Sanghili like temple like artifacts and stuff like this section I think you can tackle with like on foot or in a ghost or in a mantis um it's really like one of our like you know kind of tenants of a lot of the design of Halo 5 was trying to like have all these big open spaces with lots of different like options and like ways to like approach them and encounter them and the music's great. It's it's cool to just like at the end we're gonna see Arbiter and help him out, and that's kind of a cool uh, return to an old uh, fan favorite. Um, so yeah, I just it's it's a fun mission. Maybe we'll see him. Maybe Deisha will <laughs> glitch right past him. And, also possible. Uh, he'll never exist. <laughs> but that's why you're here to tell us that he exists. He does. <laughs> just... Yeah, he, he even does like a cool assassination and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Good thing these ghosts are here to get us through the game faster. <laughs> yeah, and especially because this game was meant for a four-player co-op. Like, basically every time you see a vehicle, there's, like, four of them. Sure. It's very nice of you guys. Because, mm -hmm. like, you know, you got the little brother syndrome where it's like, I get the ghost, you have to walk. <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice that you guys gave everyone toys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, did that level end how it was supposed to? Uh, more or less. I think you just ran past the cool assassination I was talking about. Sure. But, you know, Me. it's fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> I won't take it personally. <laughs> one of the animators might, but I don't. Um, and now we're back to one of the non-combat missions. So Got it. Meeting Can up with Dr. Her? Halsey. Yeah. And she's going to tell us that uh, they've found a constructor, which they think they can reprogram to activate the Guardian and get it to uh, get us over to where Chief is hiding out. And after this mission, we're actually going to be uh, in one of the first missions we actually built for the game. Uh, the next mission was like our vertical slice, so to speak. So it kind of mm. showcases a lot of the new, like, 
tech and sort of design things that we were going after. Um, so it holds a special place in my heart for being going through so many iterations and having so many bugs with the Kraken that I needed to fix. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's a cool mission. Why doesn't uh, Halsey, why is she missing her arm? I forgot. Uh, I believe uh, she lost that um, in Spartan Ops, I think. Um, was kind of defecting with uh, Mr. Jewel Mandama. That's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and actually, uh, speaking of injuries, uh, in one of the cutscenes that we skipped, uh, Locke and Chief have a fist fight, and Chief's uh, visor gets cracked because Locke punches him in the face. Mm. Um, and in the subsequent missions where you play as Chief, if you look at him in, in co-op, you'll actually see he still has the uh, the cracked visor. Um, That's good. Just to kind of keep that inconsistency. Yeah, I should have put just a giant crack on the screen. That'd been fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that would have been really fun. I'm sure people would have loved that one. <laughs> I'm just try to keep it realistic. <laughs> Everything about this game is so realistic. You might... <laughs> <laughs> so this this section right here, uh, Distro just went under a bridge. Very, very early on, we were, when we were kind of exploring what this level was going to be, there's actually going to be an option to, like, uh, try to board the Kraken right there. That was that big purple arm that came in and uh, destroyed some things. We've seen it a few times throughout the campaign, kind of being ominous and scary. Um, although I don't know if the speedrun has really seen it. Um, and... Yeah, it kind of like broke the flow of the level, kind of having two places to fight it. Um, so we didn't really go down that route, but like, just to kind of show like like this area in particular, like this whole big section went through so many iterations, hundreds of hours of development, and Deistro's just gone right through it. Shoots the laser with his ghost, shoots the shield with his ghost, and now he's moving on. Yeah, were you getting your ghost in places that it wasn't supposed to be right there? It didn't look mm -hmm. intentional. Yes, partially. There is like a small um, tunnel where you're supposed to bring the ghost. But after that, you can take one again. But I just take the first one and keep it. Things that if you if you try to do them at home, you may have a little difficulty. Stir does. <laughs> I I mean I I would not even be able to beat this game on legendary. Not <laughs> less like also be like trying to get skips and stuff. <laughs> Whoa! What was that? So you this is, ship suddenly. yeah, so uh, we're now on one of the Forerunner Phaetons uh, to board the Kraken, uh, which is sort of our homage to the Scarabs from uh, previous Halo games. Uh, it's a big interior with a lot of different ways to approach, like Distro here just like landed on one of the wings and went through one of the, like, the cargo bay doors. You can like board from the top and kind of fight your way through. Um, tons and tons of different ways to get through here. And I think, Distro, did, did you blow it up and I didn't even see it? I blew up the core, yes. Wow, that was so fast. Um, I also should mention that <laughs> I made sure that my teammates are not on the Kraken. I assigned them to go back because as long as they're on the Kraken, mm. the destruction sequence doesn't start. And I'm yep. not supposed to take the fate onto the next room, but if I park it in this very specific spot and wait for the objective to show up, I can take it anyway because usually it turns into stone, but, you know, speed Wait, can you? Yeah. <laughs> You who sure do it. it. <laughs> We're doing it. Who who does who developed this game? Who who did anybody test this? Game? Did anyone <laughs> test this? <laughs> Zero out of ten. Come on, devs. <laughs> ten out of ten speed run. Ten out of ten yeah, speed yeah, run. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that's the, sweet. So now you're just gonna. Great. So you're not using it now, though. I will. Oh, okay. But oh, I just spawn kill a bit with spawn the, killing. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. It's just like, oh, yeah, that's so crazy. That's cool. And what, do you bring it in just so you can kill these enemies faster? Or? Pretty much, yeah. All right. Yeah, There's the a ton of enemies, so the Phaeton's very convenient. Yeah, the Phaeton's, Phaeton's powerful. It's got that cool, like, teleport thing, too, so you can zip around in here. Everyone just has normal guns, and Master Chief's just in this <laughs> giant ship inside, just <laughs> blowing people up. <laughs> Seems a once again, seems a little unfair, but okay. That's <laughs> you can actually see the fate on the cutscene there. It's just fun. Oh, yep. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that, that was an engine. 
That's great. So yeah, now we've got the constructor and we're back to a second non-combat mission, kind of the before and after. This is the calm before the storm where Arbiter and the Swords of St. Helios are going to try to end the civil war with the Covenant. Uh, and we're kind of tagging on for the ride because the Covenant's last stronghold just so happens to be where the Guardian is. Um, and so everything's kind of converging there all at once. And that will take us to the mission that I think we featured at E3 before we launched. So it's it's a pretty, it's a pretty there's a lot of spectacle. Um, there's Halsey again, just chilling. So, so we're still Master Chief, right? Uh, this is still Locke. So oh, Chief Locke. Okay. is currently on Genesis... Uh, searching for Cortana, and we're following up to see where did he go. Hmm. I hope we find him. Yeah, that'd be nice. Be a little anticlimactic if we didn't. <laughs> He's just like, you know what? I, I don't know where he is, guys. I'm, I'm <laughs> I over it. <laughs> it's 5 p.m. I gotta, I gotta go. I'm clocking out. No overtime today. <laughs> We actually have a very combat heavy level coming up where I probably won't get the checkpoint for the first three minutes. So I have to try to not die and go fast at the same time. So that's going to be interesting. Good luck. I believe in you. I do too. You do it doesn't well. mean doesn't mean a lot, but I, I will we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and so what happens if you die? It just back to the, you, you have to just do the whole sequence again. Yeah, it gets me, it gets me back to the beginning. Unless I get really lucky with the checkpoint, which is unlikely to happen on this level. Mm. Yeah, we we try to like pepper in checkpoints kind of periodically as you progress through an encounter. But like I said, there's a lot of like safety precautions because we don't want you to get a checkpoint where you're like immediately going to die when we load it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so if there's like an enemy looking right at you or there's a grenade by your feet, um, those are all kind of things that can make the checkpoints uh, be suppressed from triggering. Um, so when distro is going so fast, the checkpoints may not ever think that you're safe enough to trigger that checkpoint. Mm. I should have to do a backup strat. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But that's oh. a fast revert. That's not really a big deal. And you get to see the cool skipping, and so that's fine. Yeah, right. that, going out it, of bounds here. The movement looks sweet when you do that. That was just uh, really unfortunate ground positioning, but that's fine. Bree, why did you guys? Uh make this game so hard i mean legendary is supposed to be pretty hard <laughs> <laughs> we didn't make distro play on legendary <laughs> yeah it's also like we had the whole challenge of like uh with because halo 5 had join and drop out uh co-op um, mm -hmm. which i worked on a lot for like the back end like engineering for it um but one of the challenges was like you have these like AI teammates all the time, which can also be humans. And so having, you know, having four Spartans is a lot more mm. than one Spartan. Um, so there we had to... It's, it's at least four times as many. Uh, I, I, the yeah. math checks out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's no way to actual know, but we can guess. Yeah. We, you know, science, you know, <laughs> science can it's only, only come, do so much for us. It can only come so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it like, trying to balance uh kind of the single player experience and also the co-op experience was a very like tough kind of problem for um the campaign team to solve um i think we did pretty good overall but mm -hmm. yeah legendary is pretty tough i never really thought too much about it it's like you get you know you make a game like this with a single player campaign and then you're like you're like yeah this is solid this is cool now we have to account for the fact that four people can be playing at the same time. They're like, oh no, mm -hmm. we gotta. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons, like these, you know, environments are so much bigger with like lots of different like flanking routes and like uh, one of the previous missions uh, on Genesis with Master Chief. There's like a section where you can fly through with phaetons, but you can also have people like running along ramps and like you know taking out the snipers that are shooting at the phaetons. So we try to give you a lot of opportunities to like have cool co-op moments where everybody's mm -hmm. doing something interesting um but yeah it's it's really tough to to do everything games are hard enough on their own <laughs> right right 
So it's how something... how are we doing, Destro? Did we, did we make it through, or are we still in the process? I believe I got the checkpoint, which is great. But there's also something interesting here. When you do the skip that I did at the beginning, where you skip the clear, sometimes you only have to destroy two out of three cannons, but you are supposed to destroy three in the casual playthrough. I'm not sure exactly why that's a thing, but uh, it's a thing. I... Hmm. It should be all three. I don't know why. Um... So, seeing as this game is playable on Series X, does that affect the speedrun at all? People playing on that console, or does or does uh, it? Is it you know the net? Because I know like sometimes backwards compatible games they naturally load faster on the newer consoles. Uh, is that something you guys of speedrunners have looked into, or do you just like, or is it a separate category or? Uh, well, the load times are faster, but freezes and cuts are not included in the official timing, so it doesn't matter. I'm actually playing on an external yeah. SSD right now, which uh, speeds up the loading times by a lot. So I'm glad I just got this skip because it's a very difficult one. It's just skip wow. the elevator. Oh, that was cool. That was There's actually a death barrier there. It looks uh, way easier than it is because I have to go at the perfect height to not hit the death barrier and then still yeah. be high enough to actually get to the platform. Now we're in the underbelly of Sunion. Kind of trying to flank around the bottom to try to get to the Guardian on the other side. It's actually one of my favorite parts because of the movement is so fun. Yeah, this, looks, this, this, looks, this area is You're cool. just parkouring through. <laughs> There's actually another cool thing coming up. Um, there are, in around I think half a minute or so, there are two hunters scripted to get up, um, which looks really cool, but... We actually kind of abuse that in the speedrun because we sort them before they actually get to attack you, before they are ready to fight. And I'm going to do that in around five seconds from now. It looks ridiculous, but it works. So let's see how that goes. Let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Another one of those, like... <laughs> Uh, the battlefield. <laughs> this dude's just <laughs> chopping him with a little laser sword before he can even move. <laughs> Elevator door opens. Fuel rod cannon comes in. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone teleports in. Yeah, they're just like, oh, okay. the level behind him. They're like, hey, we were we were fighting. I guess we're here now. Okay. What happened to those? What happened to those elite? Oh, you killed them before they could even move. Got it. Okay. <laughs> This is, yeah, this is all canon. It all makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. You only need to kill the two hunters to progress. The elevator opens after a while. And there's something mm. interesting about Halo 5. It's that when two animations happen simultaneously, they cancel each other out. I'm going to make use of that. I have left assassinations on on purpose because of that. Um, there's going oh. to be a scripted section where there's a phantom crashing the bridge, I believe. I actually forgot, it's been a while, because <laughs> I've <laughs> been speedrunning. But uh, I also assassinate the crawler at the same time, so I actually skipped the animation where I, uh, the lock starts shaking and the bridge gets destroyed, and I just run through the oh, bridge, and it looks really weird. At... Oh, that's so weird. So you're not supposed to be doing that? Oh, because, yeah, there's there's supposed to be, like, a whole sequence in first person where you, like, tumble and uh, somebody catches you. And we there's a ton of work to, like, depending on who's closest to you. Like, that's, I think, the one that grabs you. And, like, it was a very complicated sequence to, to set up. And then, yeah, the, the unit is busy with the assassination, so we can't put them in the in the little in-game cutscene. And there, there you are. Okay. <laughs> now we'll never know. That's right. cool. It's actually a very difficult clear, so I'm going to focus for a bit. Yeah, this is a tough arena. Woo. I thought you were going to die right there, but I, it just looked flashy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and so the Guardian is just out of view, uh, and that's the... That's if, if Locke and his team can get on that Guardian, they think they'll find their way over to where Master Chief is when it slips spaces out of here. I always find myself doing the thing where it's like you're behind cover and you're just like you physically lean. You're like you're trying to look and you're like, oh, it's a, it's a it's video like when, game. It's like when you're bowling and you like bowl yep. and you're like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or you, 
Oh, that's fine. There were a lot of enemies alive still. Uh, there's something interesting about this section too. Sometimes when you revert here in the speedrun, the game crashes. I don't know why. Hmm. That's a bummer. Well, that rarely happens. Uh, Bree, you should get your people on that. We really should, yeah. <laughs> well, Dishro, he, he plays unpatched, though. Or, yeah, the unpatched version, so he'll never see it anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Now that I've thought about it, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't waste your time. <laughs> Yeah, we actually had um, we had different testers kind of like playing the game differently. Like we had like three sort of like testing profiles that people ran through, where it was like the new player, the speedrunner, and the completionist. Mm. So like different testers would like when they would be playing through the campaign missions would kind of play through things differently. So like the speedrunner would try to go as fast as possible and use the physics exploits and you know do some of the things we're seeing Distro do. Not mm -hmm. quite to the same level, uh, and sure. not quite to the same level of, uh, you know, all the new tricks the community's discovered, um, but trying to find things like, oh, what if we get through this section too quickly? What if we skip past this trigger? Does the game still work? Or, you know, does the collector, like, when they 100% everything, do all the data pads and all the, like, skulls and collectibles that you can, can find, are they all still working? Um, mm. So it was a good way to, like, sort of think about, like, people play this game very differently and making sure we were testing everything in a way that accommodated that this like just looks insane like i can't even like i can barely follow what's even happening and it's not even like speed run stuff it's just like the battle itself looks absolutely insane <laughs> yeah the warden's shown up the sunions like half destroyed forerunners just zooming in from all angles your allies are down. <laughs> there's there's a lot going on. Yeah, so we're like, hey, uh, what enemy should we put right here? And they're just like, yes. And you're like, okay. <laughs> yep. Every enemy. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> this is sort of the climax of Act 2. As uh, in the cutscene we're skipping, uh, Commander Palmer and Halsey uh, help us. They sweep in with a pelican. We hop on board hop on uh, the Guardian as it slips spaces away from Sunion and Arbiter and crew finish the fight there. And now this is my favorite, like, one-off moment in the campaign uh, where kind of right in front of Distro here is the ground. Uh, so we are running down the side of the Guardian, uh, and every time we jump off of it, uh, we're falling because uh, we have, sure. like, magnetic boots that are attaching us to the Guardian. So is it faster, Distro, to like stay in the air like this? I bet it is. Yes. Just spam jump and then uh, hover when there's no enemies, or you can try to skip a bit of enemies like this, but it's faster. This is one of the more difficult sections, in my opinion, the casual play free play on Legendary. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, this is this a weird sequence to build because everything's like rotated 90 degrees. Oh, that's okay. Because the. You know, the gameplay has the, you know, you're basically running down the Guardian like that. Um, and like, it, it was just, it was a very, we had a lot of physics bugs in this level that we had to fix. Yeah, I see the whole like jumping and just kind of being like, being pulled back towards the ground, but also just like, ah, Yep, you're being pulled, you're being pulled toward the actual planet, which is in front of you. And right. being told, pulled toward the ground, which is to the side of you. Mm -hmm. Basically like doing that sort of bunny hop thing. It's also just cool to see, because you've seen, you know, if you look at these things in the skybox, they kind of move and like contort in interesting ways. And that's kind of, you're seeing that up, and, up close and personal now. Woo. That was close. That was close. <laughs> nice save. I wasn't nervous. I had every faith in you. <laughs> <laughs> and then right there, uh, we do a perspective switch. So now we're like back to reality again as we're landing on the actual planet and we don't have any more crazy 90 degree shenanigans going on. Mm. This is where things get cool again. Um, first of all, I may or may not skip an elevator, but this is actually a difficult skip. So. I'm going to focus for a bit. 
<laughs> okay. I can't even tell what's happening right now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so now we're there. Oh, yeah, because there's a whole bunch of stuff that's about to happen. Uh, Exuberant Witness is the monitor of uh, the, uh, this sort of Forerunner installation called Genesis. Um, mm. And uh, she's the best. She's one of the voices uh, for the announcer and multiplayer in Halo 5. And mm. once we released that, I never took her off. She's just a delight. Um, <laughs> and uh, But she's kind of helping out because she's concerned about what Cortana and the Warden are doing. Um, and she she very nicely gave us a tank, um, which now we've just skipped to ride some phantoms, um, which I can't blame Deister. This is certainly faster. It's kind of a floor is lava situation going on right now. This is... <laughs> oh, you can just ride it over the mountains? Yes, this is actually a really cool skip. This it's is awesome. Technically slower, but on Legendary, it's a way, way, way faster on average because the Son of Ending is a lethal. Mm -hmm. It looks really cool, so there's yeah. that too. <laughs> You just ride two phantoms. The Covenant did not plan for this. <laughs> I love that the team always like catches up though. They they just like they don't have to do any of the skips. They get to just teleport. <laughs> they they just get teleported once they're far enough behind. Yeah. Yeah. We skip not, the they would, they by would just be... um, driving off the ramp, and things get really crazy now. Well, oh, now that's it, that's it wasn't what crazy I meant. before. <laughs> yeah, uh, once again, yeah, this is uh, it's been completely normal up until mm -hmm. this is usually how far people are in after an hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Vanilla run. Yeah. All right. So back in the day, to war, uh, to fight off the two wardens that are spawning soon, we used to take the answer, which is some kind of power weapon. Mm -hmm. But now there's actually a more recent crazy glitch, okay. and. What we do now is we park the ghost in a very specific spot and I melee as I enter the ghost and we have a ghost ghost now. I'm invisible. What? So what happened there is my player mode is actually crazily offset. I'm somewhere in the air very far away from here and the, uh, the AI glitches out because they don't know where I am. Because they don't see? Oh my right. god. Right. Okay. So then they just don't even try to fight you. Interesting. They kind of do, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so trying, what would happen if you... They're trying their best. Yeah. You, they're like, what is happening? What would happen if you flipped your ghost right now? Because normally you would jump out of it if you flipped it. It depends, but you can get teleported, actually. Oh, you okay. might see that later, maybe. Uh, so you see the AI glitch uh, glitch easing up. That's because I think I'm so far away. Like, the is so far away that... Um, I don't they think just don't know happens. what to do. Yeah, it just starts freezing up. They're just looking for you, and they're like, why is there a ghost with, with no pilot just shooting us in the back? Like, I mean, <laughs> that one is of our vehicles has gone rogue. All right. Well, that was something. Well, well, there you go. I put the ghost in the ghost, and now we're in I the second boss level. Ghost, ghost. <laughs> Again, prob didn't look intended, but I'm not going to tell anybody. <laughs> So now we are uh, we're back on uh, playing as Master Chief, uh, and Cortana has juped us over to this mysterious place, where she's trying to convince Chief that uh, they should get back together again. You know, she's been exposed to all this new like powerful stuff uh, through the domain, and she's now controlling all these guardians and. She's saying, you know, I can I can bring peace to the universe. That's great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the the twist is it's a very uh, imperial and sort of fascist sort of peace where she's going to rule with an iron fist. And as long as everybody does exactly what she says, it's going to be great. Uh, but uh, humans don't really take kindly to, you know, uh, having our, our liberties and freedoms taken away. So sure. And Chief kind of makes the point of like, you know, as a as a kid with the Spartan program, what Dr. Halsey did, that took away a lot of his choices and mm -hmm. maybe that's not okay. Um, and that's, this whole kind of mission is a very like somber and, uh, you know, conversation between the two of them about, you know, 
all the good things that they could do if they were together, but now they're very ideologically opposed. Mm. Um, the music in this in this level is great too. Halo Five has has yeah some of my favorite music in in the whole franchise. I the uh, <laughs> the like the title screen I think is like I think it's like seventeen minutes of music and it's very very good. Yeah, I've got is that, the, is that your is that the soundtrack or something? That's that's, that's my soundtrack there. Oh, I don't know really if it cool. showed up in the light, but yeah, it. It, there, there's some good music in this game. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Sometimes there's a crawler that runs away. Oh wait, that's actually not even a crawler. Maybe I didn't um, get the crawler that ran away. Okay, I didn't get one. Do you have Grunt Birthday Party on? I do not. Oh, I thought I heard Grunt Birthday Party. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I must have imagined that. Grunt Birthday Party is one of the optional skulls um, that you can have on that uh, every time you get a headshot, there's like this little chorus of children going, yay! It's adorable. Why don't just you have back that to pick up some weapons. <laughs> so good to see you again, John. So good to see all of you. And the weapon, uh, the battery count that you can see on the top right is 46% right now. It can range from anything between 40 and 80. Mm -hmm. In this section, you want an incineration cannon with at least 52%, so you have three shots. I have two now, which is not optimal, but we'll manage. And um, there's a, in my opinion, really cool trick coming up again. Um, this gondola is approaching that metal platform, and I will squeeze myself in between. So the gondola will push me into the geometry of that metal platform, which will result in a pressure launch. Looks really cool. And this next section is actually also very interesting from a speedrun um, perspective because to continue, you have to hit four triggers. And because there are so many enemies on Legendary, the approach that we have there is kind of unique. Um, I'm going to talk about it in like 10 seconds. For... All right, that was one shot. Yep. There we go. We're out. That's a weird looking gun. Yeah, the light rifle's got a crazy scope. So I make sure to take out some enemies, so this whole um, next part is going to be a bit safer. So remember, this is legendary. Everything. So is the lethal. first trigger is down here. I just hit it, and then the second trigger is here, which you see I hit because there's crawler spawning. There's actually a ton, and I'm going to die instantly. So I just crouch and go down. That's the third trigger, and uh, what I just hit there, and then I go back up again, which is really cool. And we hit the fourth trigger, which spawns in four enemies, and these are the only ones that actually have to die in this section. Oh, uh, yep. Because it's just a bunch of linear checks. That's cool. It's it's mm. kind of funny how, like, you know, the community is kind of reverse engineered like the game scripting and figured out like what is the exact like right sequence of steps to you know that the game is expecting for the door to open so what what mission do we think we're on now uh this is mission 14 i think so oh, well, this is the penultimate mission we are we are we're getting there we're getting there And some of the some of the dialogue I was mentioning, you, you can at least see some of it in the subtitles of just, mm -hmm. you know, Chief and Cortana slowly realizing that um, they're they're gonna they're probably gonna disagree about what they're doing. <laughs> do, you, do you is the rest of the run like fairly straightforward, or do you still have like some crazy stuff that you have to pull off? Oh, no, the crazy kind of... stuff is coming up. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now, it looks like it's just it's just some fighting. Yes, and I pick fighting. up the Bane rifle here, which is a really fun weapon. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Not great that they go invisible. So it's kind of cheating. <laughs> John, 
Okay. All right. Oh, Jen Taylor. <laughs> She's wonderful. <laughs> Just there's a lot of just nice there's a lot of there's a lot of subtlety in, in some of these lines and some of it still gives me chills because it, it's it's good stuff. Oh sorry so are you waiting for like the teleport to happen to just go back on to the elevator? Yeah, so I did that um, to go pick up the scatter shot. And uh, I'm going to kill my teammates here. What? Oh, Twist. That's because they're very janky if they are alive, which can mess up mm -hmm. the not coming trick. Um, <laughs> might first have to hit them. There we go. Uh, <laughs> turns out your 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 teammates are the hardest enemies in the game. <laughs> yes. Fun fact: in development, uh, because there was always three of them, uh, they were often called the Musketeers. Um, that and makes sense. The three Musketeers. All right. Okay, so there's a skip coming up here. You saw the pressure launch from before. This is similar, but with a more precise lineup. And we get launched up in the air. Nice. This actually skips a huge fight because this room that you see below me mm -hmm. has a ton of very, very overpowered enemies. <laughs> and I skip all of them. And now we land on some kind of invisible ceiling or floor, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> uh, all the enemies that. right now are just like, hey. <laughs> That's okay. well, that's cheating. <laughs> that's this is cheating. He's he is a cheater. Although, although you know the Prometheans can teleport, so you know maybe Chief is just giving him a little, little taste of their own medicine. Right. Yeah. So this is a triple warden fight, which is a really hot section. But it turns out you can just clamber up here and go to the end, and you can skip the fight entirely. You sure can. <laughs> and that's like it, something anybody can do. Or is it's, it like... It's a little tricky to pull off, but you t you totally can do it. <laughs> Those guys have been waiting their whole life to take down <laughs> the Master Chief. <laughs> he just ran around him. He was just like, look over here and just goes circles around him and that's it. So this Pretty is the last up. level and we start by dropping for the floor. Sure. You love it. You love to see it. Excellent. So finding. Gotta... Oh, I actually didn't get the jump. Can I still save it? I can. Nice. Look at that. I just have to get out of here. There we go. It doesn't make any sense to me, but. Impact. Yeah. So. Well, like, I saved it. I'm like, it just looks glitchy, but okay. <laughs> I just turned on coordinates. This is also one of the reasons why Unpatched is faster. Uh, usually, before the easy speed runs, ran Unpatched, but we have a new uh, skip that is very precise. Um, now, if you want to go for work on an easy, you should also play unpatched. And this is why on the patch version of the game, you cannot turn on coordinates anymore. But this is the release version. And there's a button combo for this. And this is going to be relevant for the end. I'm not going to spoil it for now. But um, this is the last level called Guardians. It mm -hmm. is a very, very long level casually. Um, you have to go through a massive fight in the next room that is coming up. And then. There is some kind of an open area where you have to destroy five cores before you can progress. And there is a button in the middle of that area with a ton of enemies surrounding it. You have to get to push that button somehow after killing a bunch of enemies so you don't die. And there is a Colosseum building um, coming up. But first, I use the momentum from the gondola to get launched to the next section. There we go. Nice. But yeah, in the Colosseum, you have a massive fight with a ton of waves. And then there's an elevator ride. And the speedrun might have a different approach to that. <laughs> that's the whole coordinates thing. That's pretty insane. That's I, so it's a it's a you push buttons in a certain way and it brings them up. I didn't know uh, that was yes. a thing. It's AX and I think uh, D-pad up. You have to hold it for a bit on huh. the default settings. Or maybe I know all control schemes. I'm not sure. Today I have just sure. Yolo through here, but I, I know haven't... right. <laughs> That's uh, that's really fine. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. Door, please, the end there, so that way, once you, it's coming up, and and you're like, you, you're gonna put yourself in a very specific spot. Correct. So if you remember the ghost trick from Genesis, it has a comeback here, with a small twist. Ooh. We do the whole thing again. 
There we go. And um, as I said, my player position is offset by a lot, and I can use that to get teleported. Mm. Oh. What the <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. What the heck? Oh, that's that's so cool. I love that. <laughs> and now I talked about the elevator at the end of the level, but we hit the trigger in mid-air. Well, actually, I I messed it up because I I thought I was on the other side of the building. I went to the wrong place. I actually, didn't hit the trigger. That's okay. The trigger is cool. We can see it again. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not mad. Again, also, if you would have said I think, a glitch. Um, when you get uh, hit by a plasma pistol overcharge while you're in the vehicle, you instantly die, no matter how much health you have. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's intended intended or not, but I don't think it is. I'm not sure either. We get to see this again. Isn't it beautiful? It's always the best. That's so and cool. Just in the sky. Yeah, if you would have been like, yeah, we we have to do this twice as part of the speed run, I'd been like, yeah, sure. RNG minute. Mm-hmm. I'm making sure I'm the, on the correct side this time. Okay, good. So we hit the trigger in the elevator mint air, and that warps us back into the into this part of the building, which is unloaded. And now after a certain time, uh, the ending part spawns in. So I'm going to time my jumps precisely. Because if I go too fast, I might uh, get soft locked. Because the area will load around now, we'll be stuck. This is all perfectly timed. And this is the uh, ramp of the end of the game. And uh, we're going to make use of the coordinates now because, <laughs> as it turns out... Oh, you're just here. Yeah. There is a very precise spot that you can stand in. Normally, in the casual playthrough... Um, in the casual playthrough, lock will open up the relay card you see in, um, in the middle of the screen there. And there's a bunch of animations happening. But if I go to 343.6, then I believe there we go. 343, three, got it. Okay. It's an Easter egg. I wish I could say that was intentional. <laughs> Wait, actually, it's 344.6 or 7. My bad. Ah, uh, never mind. Okay, okay. There we, go. okay <laughs> we were this close to having an Easter egg that was unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I did. Uh, I remember remembered myself. It's 344.6 or 7. 344.607. Okay. All right. That is very how, precise. How did you find this? It was in the uh, it was in the walkthrough. It was in the prima guide. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, just, like yeah, just turn on coordinates and uh, you know push yourself up against the wall. Wait a second. This is not supposed to happen. Is it three for three after all? I actually forgot the number. That's uh -oh. never happened before. Well, we did. It should three, be three four. for four. Let's try 3 for free again if it doesn't work, it's 3 for 4. Okay. Someone Google it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I think it's 3 for 4, but we'll see. Yeah, it's 3 for 4, because that's the wrong coordinate at the end. That's so funny. That's, that's so funny. So, so what is it that's trying to happen? What? Why does it have to be so precise? What are you trying to avoid? Um, I'm going to explain it very soon. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Oh, there okay. you go. So if there I stand in this very precise spot, the whole animation uh, doesn't play, and I just get warped into the uh, trigger, uh, like into the end. I don't know why that's a thing, but uh, it has to be that very precise spot. And it was 3, 4, 4, 6, 7, so my bad. You'll never forget that ever again. Yes. Did, that must be like the very edge of like a trigger volume or something. I have no idea yeah. what that is. Wait, so is that it? Did we beat the game? Yes, that's it. Actually, oh yeah, time. Oh, right, time. Sorry. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> Okay, so so the final time wow. uh, I'm sure you'll see it on screen one thirty one fourteen. How do you how do you feel about that? Again in a marathon setting. I'm pretty happy. Um, <laughs> I forgot the number at the end, but that's just to add some excitement to the end of the run. <laughs> I, sure I I I I think it couldn't have worked out better. Okay, so now that we've beat the game, let's get one more lore update. What ex what exactly is happening here in the ending of the game? Yeah, so. Uh... 
Chief and Cortana met up, um, and Chief rejected the idea of this imperial uh, peace that she was offering, sure. and uh, she trapped Chief in a cryptum, which is like a prison, uh, and tried to zoom uh, him off to places unknown. Locke comes in, uh, rips the, the cryptum open, uh, and exuberant witness takes control back of Genesis again, uh, steals the cryptum back from Cortana and her guardian as they zoom off to somewhere. Ooh. Um, mm -hmm. And now we're seeing uh, Cortana has sent a call to AIs across the galaxy uh, that she calls the created. And it's sort of this AI rebellion um, that's been foreshadowed in some of the scenes that uh, we, we just speed run right past through. Sure. Um, and uh, so a lot of the UNSC is going dark because they rely on AIs to run so many things. And, uh, you know, it's this sort of Empire Strikes Back moment of like, Oh no, our, our heroes are kind of at, at, at a rough point here. Um, mm. But now uh, Locke and Chief are making their way back to St. Helios to meet up with Dr. Halsey and the Arbiter. And they're, you know, off screen kind of discuss like, what do we do next? We're in a, you know, Cortana's in charge now. She kind of, she was in many ways successful. She didn't get Chief on her side. Mm -hmm. And so Chief is kind of the the hope to stop Cortana now. Uh, and that kind of, you know, is where we where we leave the story of Halo 5. And uh, I guess we'll see in the legendary ending right here um, is a shot of a Halo ring with Cortana humming to herself and the lights come online, uh, which, you know, the, the next game does take place on a Halo ring. So maybe that's related. I don't know. Could it's be. almost like they ended knowing that they were going to make a second game. Weird. That's crazy. Well, that's that's insane. That that speed run is, um, you know, it's completely wild. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, analog center myself here. Uh, Distro, thank you so much. That was uh that was really 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 fun to watch. That was that was really awesome. Cool. <laughs> it was really fun to be running. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. So, Distro, where can we find you online if people want to watch more speedruns? Well, if you like uh, Halo 5 speedruns and Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell speedruns, you can find me on twitch.tv slash distrotv. Also, if you want to see another commentated run, I will be running the game again at Awesome Games on Quake 2022. So that's something to look forward to. I am looking forward to, to AG. Likewise. I love those. Uh, and Bree, what, what, you got, what you got going on right now? Halo 5's over. Like, uh, do you got, you got yeah. any upcoming projects or current projects that are possibly live yeah. right now in beta? <laughs> yeah, little little indie game called Halo Infinite. It's got some pretty cool bots, some cool stuff in the Academy if you want to check it out. Um, and you can find me. Uh, I'm at uh, not on social media too much, but I've got a website, breachandirely.com. So that'll have like, if I'm writing cool articles about bots or anything, I'll probably post them there. So if you're interested in some of those things, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to share more about that. That'll be cool. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. This was really a lot of fun. This was really cool. This was great. Thank you so much for having me. Same. Thanks for having me. It was really fun. And thank you all for watching. And remember to check out the new Applebee's Cheetos Boneless Wings available in both original and Flamin' Hot for only $9.99, available now for a limited time. And for more speedruns and Halo, stick with IGN.